another important parameter in the calculation of uh, dash flow dysfunction is the pulmonary vein flow waveform or pulmonary venous flow pulmonary venous flow into the left atrium so it will be in uh, coherence or in, in connection with the mitral valve inflow the, uh, through the mitral valve inflow only we will put the cursor on the pulse uh, the doppler on the one of the pulmonary veins either the posterior or the lateral pulmonary veins which we get and uh, usually a systole a diastole and a a wave will be there usually we will measure the s d and the AR, the A amplitude and the AR dimension. So AR is due to the arterial contraction during the severe arterial contraction, the reciprocal movement of the blood into the pulmonary veins, veins will be taken as a negative deflection from the probe because the probe is situated here and the arterial blood going going backwards over the pulmonary vein will be taken as a negative. So this is the arterial kick, this is the um, <coughs> early systolic uh, blood flow from the pulmonary veins into the uh, left atrium and this is the blood flow into the left atrium during the uh, left ventricular inflow or the diastole so uh, systolic and diastolic and the arterial kick that's what the pulmonary vein waveform stands for usually it will also be similar to the in the early di the uh, early diastole dysfunction yes we will be going and the d will be prominent and as the diastole function becomes more and more the s wave becomes more and more and the to d even but what is very important is the the volume the the length of the a or the ar length the duration becomes prominent and the amplitude of the a becomes prominent because the atrial kick goes on increasing and increasing as the diastole dysfunction severe becomes severe the atria dilates and in a way the, this a amplitude or the surface the area under the curve will also increase and the AR dimension, the duration, that is the arterial kick, arterial contraction duration will also increase. This AR duration is very important for the diastolic dysfunction measurement as such. So this is what uh, is usually seen. This is the S wave, this is the A wave and this is the AR duration, this is the A, A and the AR duration. This is what we always calculate more for the arterial systole and the uh, possible diastolic dysfunction. And what else we need is the LSI's, absolutely LSI's measurement is required, one is in the apical 4 chamber view, another is in the plaques view or the apical 2 chamber view, you can get it in the CMAX formula, usually you put the, you get the two dimensions and put it in the formula and it will calculate, it's not an issue, but left atrial size also determines the LV dysfunction, LV dashboard dysfunction, if the patient is in AF, even LA dimension will depict the, uh, this one. Last one is the TR. You put the cursor on the continuous uh, flow velocity on the uh, tricuspid regurgitation jet, and you will get a TR jet. And this will be also important because the reciprocal, if there is no pulmonary artery hypertension, the reciprocal pulmonary venous congestion with pulmonary artery hypertension will be also a picture of the tastral dysfunction.